Hello guys, today we are going to talk about five exercises which will help you improve your black metal playing. Now these exercises might not look like they're made for black metal, but I will show you some examples where they are useful. Hello guys, I'm Sabast and today we will learn 5 exercises which are great for black metal. So without much talking, let's start. First exercise is the most underrated exercise ever, the most underrated scale ever. It's the chromatic scale. Now for these exercises you won't need any tabs, I will show you everything. So the chromatic scale. It's something natural, it's something you should learn first. So I hear a lot of black metal bands, you know, slamming power chords like crazy. And when it comes to single tones like... They suck there. So chromatic scale will help, help you there. It's mostly exercise for speed and control. So the chromatic scale, I'm sure maybe you've, you've heard about it. So, it goes like, place your index finger on the first fret, second finger on the second fret, third finger on the third fret, and fourth finger on the fourth fret. And it goes just like this. Now you can go down the string, so on the A string, again. And now you go up, so fourth on the fourth fret, third finger on the third fret, second finger on the second fret, and first, uh, first finger on the first, uh, first fret. Blah, blah, blah. So, and you go up. So it sounds when you play it, you know, regularly, like exercise, like this. So you move up and down the fretboard. Now another variation is if you have problems, of course you need to, you know, pick up and down. If you have problems with, you know, switching strings, you go on one string. So it looks like this alternate version. And ah. So. That's the chromatic scale, I think it's very helpful. You don't need any reasons why it's helpful, I think in any any kind of guitar player in any genre should know that scale. Now second exercise which is more for black metal and, and I think it's the most useful one of these exercises. Uh, now I'm not sure of the names, forget about the names, we'll call it you know my way. So I think it's called the spider chord. So Basically this one is a bit tricky, so, but you'll get used to it. So, it looks like this. Place your first finger on the E string on the first fret, so index finger. Uh, second finger, so middle finger, uh, place it on second fret of the A string. So, third, your ring finger on third fret on the D string and your pinky finger on the 4th fret of the G string. G string. <laughs> so, it, you play it, no, you don't play it like this, which is third exercise, we'll get to that later. Uh, you play it like a chord. Sounds, you know, pretty stupid, but it's useful. Believe me, I will show you an example. So, now you place your first finger on the G string, first fret, second finger, D string, second fret, uh, ring finger, third 
fret of the A string and pinky finger 4th fret of the E string. I'm not good at this, but you'll get it. So, look, uh, sounds like this. So basically the exercise look like, looks like this. Now you have other variations like going up and down strings like... Now I suck a bit at this, I should practice. I, even I should practice that more, but great exercise, believe me, it's a great exercise now where it's useful. Mostly it's useful on some bigger and smaller chords like... Another variation. Now, another variation, like a bit harder. And more like Swedish black metal, that chord, chord style. So that thing, uh, so that exercise should help you to switch chords a little faster. So spider chord, really great exercise. Now third exercise, I don't think I should explain that one where it's useful. It's basically a combination between first exercise and second exercise. So between chromatic scale and spider chord, and it's I think it's called the spider crawl. Some people say spider crawl is legato exercise, which looks like this. But uh, this one is, you know, variation, so it helps you in both ways. So it looks like this. Basically, everything is the same like the, the second exercise, spider chord, but you just pick, you know, the strings like this. And again, you can go up and down the strings like this. And like this, you know, so a lot of variations from that exercise. Now the fourth exercise, it is my exercise. I invented that one and I'm very proud of that one. And if you use it somewhere, I put copyright on it. So it's called the Sablast exercise. Now, I wouldn't talk about this exercise if I wasn't 100% sure it helps. It does help. And basically what that exercise does is uh, helps the strength of your fingers. And the second thing which does, uh, it helps your mind-muscle connection. So what my muscle connection basically is, is that when you play some riff and you think, you know, that riff is fucking with my mind, you know, it's not, not the riff I'm used to. So that's my muscle connection, you have to, you know, practice even that. So basically that exercise looks like this. So you're not going to play barre chord with your pinky, but sometimes you can use it like three strings. Of course your ring finger isn't, again, for barre chords, but your first finger is, your index. So, you don't have to play barre chords with other fingers, but it helps the strength. So, it looks like this. You play six strings, six strings with your index finger. Then you place your middle finger next to your index finger on the second fret. Basically, here is the six, but never mind. So, here you play five strings. That's the my muscle connection. So you don't you don't play six like the first one. You play five. When you place your ring finger, you play four. Again, it's fucking with your mind. Now you have to play four. And when you place your pinky, you play three. 
So it looks like this. I really believe in this exercise. I think it's a great exercise, not even for black metal, but m even more for jazz type stuff. Uh, basically, it helps your barre chords when you play those minor chords. So, I believe in this one. Next exercise is the one which you will say it's a black metal exercise. It's just minor chord picking exercise, let's call it that way. So, this one, the last one, is more for fun. So, let's have fun, I will show you now. It's great for writing black metal song, it's, it's great for exercise, great for warm-up techniques, great as a warm-up technique and all these exercises are great for warm-up, of course but this one is especially for you to have fun, so let's start basically let's take a chord, which is E minor so, and break it down again my guitar is a bit out of tune like in the first video, but uh, so, you pick it, so you go like this. And a lot of variations, of course, switch chords, like... And of course you can pick it even longer, so you get something like... So basically, I believe this is great because you practice and you have fun. So you can write a song that way. For example, I'll try to write some song now. Let's see. Right? Okay, I suck, but if you take some time, you'll get better at writing songs and shit. And I believe these five exercises are really great for black metal. I do believe in them. So let's, how do you say, review what we have. So, chromatic scale. Blah, 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 blah. A variation is, of course, on one string. Second exercise, spider chord. Variation is up down the strings. Uh, spider crawl. Again, variations up and down the strings. Uh, Sublast exercise. And black metal picking technique exercise. Exercise. <laughs> I should practice that those more so I'm lazy but I hope you won't be and practice that to improve your black metal playing. Till next time I'm Salvas and see ya.